Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. So today I'm going to have a go at a Sudoku that's been sent in by one of our viewers called uh, Faris Hadadin, who has sent in this puzzle saying um, not only has he tried it, he's also run it through a Sudoku solver which couldn't give him a logical way of doing it and had to resort, it said, to brute force to fill it, which I assume means that being a computer, it could try every possible array and see which one fitted. So we're going to have a go and see, see if we can't show you a way of getting to the end. Um, and just a bit of housekeeping. Um, we're always asked what software are we using. This is one of kind of three things we do today. I'm using a, an application called Hodoku version 2.2.0, which is very good because it's quite nice at showing the um, pencil marks as well as the large numbers. So that's what I'm going to be using today. And uh, just going to have a go at this puzzle now and we'll see how we get on with it. So, um, right, this is interesting. 713 in row 8 here and 689 in the final box. So the other numbers that must go in these three cells are 4, 2, and 5. So the first one could be any of them, the next one could be 4, 5, and the next one 2, 5. You see we have this 2 and this 4 in those columns. And that means that these other three cells are 1, 3, and 7. This one must be the 1 because there's a 3 and a 7 in its column. And we can put the 3, 7 as a pair in those two cells. Um, we have 6, 8, 9 to go in those remaining cells but we, in that row, but we don't know quite how they go. Now 3 in the central box must be in one of those two um, because it can't be in those two because there's a 3 in that box. Ah, this cell here 15724 in its column, 68 in its row, and 3 in its box. The only candidate left is a 9. Um, 8 here and 8 here mean that for this box, the only place the 8 can go is there. Because of that 9 and that 9, this is the only cell for a 9. And this must be a 6, because of that 6... Uh, we've got 2, 4, and 3 still to go in. That must be a 3. It's got 2 and 4 above it. So there's a 2, 4 pair there. That's the only... Uh, sorry, not 2. That's the only place for a 1 in row 7. And this, therefore, must be 7 and 3 in that order. There's a 5 there. These are 6 and 8 in some order. These are 2 and 9 in some order. So quite a bit of stuff done at the bottom there. It's quite useful. Um, now, what else can we go moving up? 6 could be in any of these three cells. 9 must be either there or there in the top right box. 2 got a 2 in row 2 and row 3 already, so 2 must be in row 1 up there. And that 3 in column 4, with that 3 in column 6, gives us a 3 either there or there. Now remember, with this notation, I'm not saying that this cell is either 2 or 3, but I'm saying that the 3 must be either there or there, and the 2 in one of those two top cells. Um, <clears throat> These are 2, 5, and 9. Ah, oh, 7 and 3 in column 9, 7 and 3 in column 8. So 3 and 7 must be amongst those three cells. 1, we've got a 1 there and a 1 there, so 1 must be either there or there. And that's quite a bunch of information about, oh, four. 
Look, we've got four in column six, four in column four, four in row six and four in row four. The only possible place for a four in the central um, box is in the middle of it. Two, five, six, one. There are there. Eight in this left-hand box must be in column three. I think we're running out of deductions we can make based on what we already have. Ah, oh, five in the central box must be in column five. Struggling a bit now, but I'm going to go back to this box, which has got quite a lot of information in it. Now, two, got a two there and a two there. There are three cells that a two could go in. Um, this one, this one, and this one. Now it would be quite good to rule it out of those two if that was possible, because then we'd know it was here on the edge of the Sudoku. That would help with that cell and therefore that one. So I'm going to suggest that if we had a two in one of these cells, that would mean that these three cells would have to be two, three, and seven. That would force a 1 into here. That would make this pair a 6-8 pair. That's quite interesting because we've already got an 8 pair of cells in rows 4 and 5. Um, so that would put an 8 down. Oh, sorry, I've made a mistake down here. Sorry, these are a 2-7 pair, not a 2 9 just fixing that. Right, so we'd have a, if we had a 2 up here, we'd have a 6 8 pair here. Now that would mean that the 8 here would be in one of these two cells. And that would mean that these two cells, which definitely contain a 3 and either a 6 or an 8, it can't be an 8 anymore because the eights in columns four and five are taken there and there. So these two cells would be three and six. So just like the eights, we'd have the sixes completed in rows four and five. So the six, the six there would mean this was an eight and this cell would be a six down here. Now I'll take that out in a moment and look, it, it, Hidoku knows it's wrong. And now that is because if we had a 6 in row 4 and 5 there and a 6 in row 4 and 5 there, the 6 in row 6 would have to be here because of this 6. And because of the combination of those two 6s, the 6 in column 3 would have to be up here. And that would put a 6 here in the top box, which would clash with that 6 that we imagined down there. So that is not possible after all. And that means that we can rule a 2 out from one of these cells. Now, I mean, that's a bit complicated, but that is why a computer has to go at this in a brute force way, because that may be a little too much looking ahead for it to do. But we've managed it. And uh, if you're wondering about that, do replay that bit and fill in a grid to see how it would work. But we've worked out that the two in this box must be in that cell. And as I said, that fixes our five there. It allows us to complete column nine. We can sort out the five, four, two combination down here. And that's quite interesting again, because now we can pull the same trick again with fives. If there was a five in this column, in this box, so in one of these three cells, with the three and seven that we know are there, then there'd be a one here, and there'd be a six, eight pair in these two cells. And for exactly the same reasons as before, we would therefore fail, because we'd have an eight pair there, an eight pair here, um, and therefore, those two would be a three and a six. That would force the six in the um, 
bottom area into the same place. We'd have a six there, we'd have a six up there, and a six there, clashing with the six down there. So for exactly the same reasons, we would fail if we had a five in those three cells. Feel free to take a pencil and work that out. But it proves to me that the five must be in column eight here. And I'm going to fill in the fives there. I mean, it's a pretty complicated chain of logic. I'm not going to deny that. But it seems to work. So having done that, we can up there. Sorry, the whole point of that was we've got 5, 6, 7, 4, 3, 2, 1, 8. This cell up here, that we know that 5 and 6 are in this column now. 7, 4, 3, 2 with the 1, 8 at the top. That's where, not there, this is where the 9 goes. So 5 and 6 there. That's where the 9 goes. Now across the top, this cell now has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in its column and 8, 9, 7 in its row. So that's definitely a 6. This is definitely a 2. Um, this must be a 3. It's got 4 and 5 in its box. So we don't know about these last two cells. They're 4 and 5 in some order. But in this box up here, we've got 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7. This becomes a 6. We can put 8 and 9 as a pair in there. Three, 4 is one of those two. Um, two six. Ah, this must be a 7. It's the only possibility left because of that 8 9 pair there. And these two are an 8 9 pair themselves in on the left hand side here. Um, <coughs> two, six, seven. Three must be over here somewhere. That's nine, that's the only place it can go. Four, one, R, ah, six must be on in column one for this box. Seven must be in column two, I think. Seven, six, three. Four is definitely one of those. And these could be three, six, or eight. Ah, the eight, six, this six that we placed has resolved the eight, six pair here. And this two that we placed in the top box has resolved the seven, two. So that sorts out the nine, eight up here. 6, 9 in these two are resolved by this 9. These are now 5 and 7, but we don't know the order yet. These are 8 and 3. And again, oh, sorry, I don't know I got into that cell. These two are 8 and 3. And we've got 8 in one of those two in row 4 and 5. 8 in one of those two in row 4 and 5. The 8 must be in row six over here. And in fact, we now have a three seven pair here, a five six pair here. This must be a one eight pair. And that means in this row we have nine one eight six two four. Um, oh, actually, that doesn't resolve yet. This must be a one or an eight. Oh, I just feel we're nearly done now. Oh, threes. Well, we know that the three in row six in this box must be there. Ah, oh, this is this a two six pair? No. Ah, oh, but this was a these two were a six, so that has to be where the six is. That has to be where the two is. Now we've also resolved this nine eight pair. And okay, so that fixes the three eight pair there. The seven three pair has been resolved, so it's the five six pair. Therefore, we can finish off the 
central box and now we're really just finishing off the puzzle I think at this point um, seven three there we've sorted out the four two pair that was down there this is three and one five and four four one that resolves the one eight pair here and finally eight five here and I think that does it so there we go that's that is quite a tough um, puzzle. Thanks to Ferris for sending that in. It's quite difficult, especially to see that long chain of circumstance in the middle where a two in one of these two cells gets resolved. One thing I have noticed, and it's quite a useful tip, is that where you do have three possible cells for a number, it very often may not be fair, but by the law of probability, you'd expect it to only end up in the third place a third of the time. My experience is it normally ends up there about half the time. So it's, it's quite often worth trying to eliminate a pair of them together because that will work about half the time. But it's not really based on anything except experience, but possibly the way that you have to set up a Sudoku to be solvable leads to conclusions like that slightly more often than you'd expect <clears throat> on a probability basis. So I hope that solves of some use to you. I mean, that's quite a tough puzzle. Next time, maybe we'll do something a little, a little more straightforward. But uh, well done if you did it on your own. It's, it's difficult. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. And bye for now.